Satellite imagery shows signs of a major renovation and expansion at a restricted military facility near Moscow that once housed a Cold War biological weapons program, the Washington Post reported. Sergeyev Pozad, 6, a military site northeast of Moscow, was a Soviet biological weapons research center during the Cold War. The Soviet military used the lab to experiment with weaponizing the viruses that cause smallpox and Ebola, among others. Shortly after Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, satellite imagery indicated massive construction and renovation at the Sergeyev Pozad, 6 site, the Washington Post reported, citing photos from imaging firms Planet Labs and Maxer. The expansion amounts to over 250,000 square feet and 10 new buildings. According to experts in biodefense, the military, and satellite imaging who spoke to the Washington Post, the facilities harbor some of the distinctive features of high-security biological labs that handle dangerous pathogens. Among these features are extensive rooftop air handling units, underground infrastructure, heightened security, and a possible power plant. The layout is consistent with lab design and suggests maximum containment labs, one expert said. The upgrades are consistent with this secure, top-secret military biological facility's historic role in developing viral biological weapons, said Andrew Weber, a former Pentagon official and senior fellow at the Council on Strategic Risks. Russian officials have said that the purpose of the labs is to study Ebola viruses and other deadly microbes in order to protect Russia from possible bioterrorism. The expansion at Sergeyev Pozad, 6 coincides with a Russian disinformation campaign in the early months of the full-scale invasion, when the Kremlin falsely accused Ukraine of developing biological weapons. Officials told the Washington Post that it is impossible to tell from the satellite photos whether Russia plans to use the Sergeyev Pozad, 6 labs to research and develop biological weapons. Biological warfare is banned under international law. While there is no evidence Russia has used such weapons in its war against Ukraine, Kiev has accused Moscow of launching thousands of chemical weapons attacks during its ongoing invasion. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also repeatedly resorted to nuclear blackmail to deter Ukraine's Western allies from a more aggressive response. For astronauts returned to Earth on Friday after a nearly eight-month space station stay extended by Boeing's capsule trouble and Hurricane Milton. A SpaceX capsule carrying the crew parachuted before dawn into the Gulf of Mexico just off the Florida coast after undocking from the International Space Station midweek. The three Americans and one Russian should have been back two months ago. But their homecoming was stalled by problems with Boeing's new Starliner astronaut capsule, which came back empty in September because of safety concerns. Then Hurricane Milton interfered, followed by another two weeks of high wind and rough seas. SpaceX launched the four, NASA's Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett and Jeanette Epps, and Russia's Alexander Grabenkin, in March. Barrett, the only space veteran going into the mission, acknowledged the support teams back home that had to replan, retool and kind of redo everything right along with us, and helped us to roll with all those punches. Their replacements are the two Starliner test pilots Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, whose own mission went from eight days to eight months, and two astronauts launched by SpaceX four weeks ago. Those four will remain up there until February. The space station is now back to its normal crew size of seven, for Americans and three Russians, after months of overflow. Like we said before, the capsule's going about 15 to 16 miles per hour. And As you can see, SpaceX's recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon Splashdown. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down, fired straps and, um, and harnesses around, as you can see there, around the Dragon capsule. We also heard confirmation that uh, the words that were used were unfired ordnance, that those are those pyrotechnics that are utilized to 
fire will be lifted into that nest and then that nest will translate toward the camera that we are looking from now. So that nest will translate toward the forward end of the recovery vessel. Brace for capsule lift. Dragon. All right, lift now underway as we bring Dragon Endeavor, Endeavor out of the water. So the side hatch was never used uh, while it was in space. So this will be the first time that that side hatch will be reopened since liftoff. But it, uh, it is typically one of those middle seats because they're easiest um, to reach. So again, you do see uh, that crew member getting some assistance. I can't quite tell who it is just yet. I can only imagine what it feels like to have to stand up after spending nearly eight months in space and having to stand up for the first time with Earth's gravity. And that is uh, NASA astronaut Matt Dominic, who is now out of the spacecraft. Astronaut uh, Mike Barrett, this is the, uh, he's the veteran on this space flight. The other three flyers on board, Crew 8, were, were all rookies. And I do believe that is NASA astronaut Jeanette Epps, who is next out. Yep, Jeanette Epps was the next one out, so Ale Alexander Grubankin will be next. <laughs> Some thumbs up. And we now have all four crew members outside of uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor following their 235 days in space. Some cheers and excitement for Crew 8. That's great to see. Heavy snowfall caused havoc for traffic in the Russian city of Magadan on Friday after a powerful cyclone hit the country's far east overnight. Snow covered roads and sidewalks for some 12 hours, trapping cars, emergency vehicles and even snow plow machinery. Rescue services were stationed at the most treacherous roads in the city and on the magadan balagano Italone Regional Highway, according to Vyacheslav Kozlov, the regional deputy head of the country's emergency ministry. Snow is typical for the Magadan region in October, but usually it appears gradually, unlike this year. The cyclone is expected to continue in the area for another 24 hours and then move towards Kamchatka and Chukotka. Где КДМки? Где что? Всю ни одной машины нет на дороге. Чистим тротуары, вот надо на вторую полосу переехать, не могу. Тяжело снег, тяжелый, ну, резко так. На опасных участках в городе выставлены спасательные посты на высокопроходимой технике, а также на перевалах территориальной дороги Магадан-Балаган-Эталон. 